Yeah. Oh, so this is it. Yeah. Now it's time to start putting some paint on the guitars. Um, and uh, that's where we do that, right here in Man, the finishing department. Man, let's do it. This is exciting. All, All right, right, let's go. All right, everybody, we're in the finishing area here. I'm with Scott Rush, who's going to be showing us around and see all these guitars being sprayed to their beautiful finishes, man. This yeah. is incredible. Well, I'm a little biased, but I think this is the best department in the whole building, <laughs> right? Out of everything we do, I think this is probably the coolest part. So whenever the guitars come in, you know, they're in that raw state. So the first thing we got to do uh, is we got to get some sealer on them. Okay. Uh, we get the, the die covered up, we get the filler covered up, get a little bit of protection on it. Right. Uh, and then, then we'll prep it. Uh, and everything we're doing, we're, we're heading towards this goal right here, uh, where they're going to get in the booth and they're going to get the primary colors put on them. Okay, right? so that's not the color of the guitar right that's now. That's not the finished product. Got it. So this is actually just, if you will, the base color setting up for the final shade that he's in there doing now. Uh, so what you're seeing is actually when he's done. And they'll come over, they'll move over to the next station right before here. And this is some of his work for the day, is what's in that rack right there. Uh, that's just some of his work for the day. How long does that take to dry? you're probably gonna need a good 20, 30 minutes to really let that paint, let that sealer cure. Okay. Uh, so by the time he gets done, and let's say he gets to this last guitar, you see the length of the line? Uh, oh. Usually by the time he gets done and that line runs its route, by the time it comes down, that's about 15, 20 minutes. Oh, So okay. usually by the time they reach the end, uh, these lines are set up to hold about 80. 80, okay. So he'll bring in 20 or 30, he'll get those worked on, transfer those over, he'll bring in the next batch. Next batch. Uh, and they're usually different colors. He'll have 10 of one color, seven of another color. So he really has to be careful uh, to, to mind the quote number, to mind what color that's called for. Because if you're not paying attention, you might paint something the wrong color. I got you. Do, you. do you think it's possible for us to go take a peek and see him spraying one of the guitars? Absolutely. Absolutely. You guys right. have at it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so what he's doing right there is actually the finished color. That's the last stage of that particular color on that model. Wow. Okay, and it looks like you guys have got, is it two spray booths here? Yeah. So that one is the primary spray booth. Okay. This one is more of a... Um, oddball colors he might not have a color in a gun we got one guitar oh. that needs a color we'll just bring it in here spray it in so here this might be more like a made to measure or like a dealer exclusive run or something like that pretty much yeah okay. it's more supplemental to what he's doing okay so now we're here with lisa yeah who's going to be doing the the binding scraping yeah okay so, awesome so you know one of the things we talked about out in Whitewood was, you know, how we have to, um, half our battle on, on building guitars is making the equipment and the tools to actually build the guitar. Again, we can't just go out and order a Les Paul custom uh, binding scraping kit off of yeah, Amazon or I mean, whatever. I figured it'd just be a razor blade or something, like a standard. You know, we need all kinds of different angles and, oh, and different shapes right. and all of that. So, and, and each scraper is completely unique in what tools they want or need to, to accomplish the, the, the job. And so we just buy metal stock and they, they shape it and uh, create it themselves. Lisa's here with the Les Paul Custom Black Beauty. Again, just looking like a black Les Paul standard until she does her magic. Wow. So we'll, we'll can't wait to, to see that. I'll hand those to her very carefully. Yeah. But. Every little detail is about the little nuances of historical accuracy. And that comes all the way down to serialization. You know, we do a combination of ink stamps or a hard stamp, like on, on a 60s guitar. This is where the guitar is actually getting an identity beyond wow, just being okay. a, a gold top. It's actually becoming who it will be forever. Okay, so now what's this area behind me here? The Dude, are those gold? Yeah, those are, those are gold glitter. Uh, actually, those are 355s with diamond F holes. Holy smokes. 
So what happens is uh, after our guy here gets done painting, uh, then it goes over into the scraping. You saw that part. Yeah. Uh, whatever serial numbers or decals are needed happens over there too. Saw that, yes. And uh, the following day, uh, they come into this room and they're divided out between two booths because we put eight coats of lacquer on each guitar. Uh, and, you know, you really need two sprayers to accomplish that. So they'll come in here and they'll have no lacquer on them. They'll just have sealer and they literally build the lacquer up by hand through the day. Uh, and it's an all day process, you know, eight wow. coats. And they have to be very particular in how they do it too, to make sure the build is on their right. And okay. you get the correct amount of lacquer. That way it goes through the rest of the process and gets that really nice, glossy, finished look that you would see over in Final Assembly. Uh, they got to give that uh, three days dry time. Okay. The lacquer has to have a minimum of 72 hours minimum before they, put it, yeah, before they wow. put it on the buffing wheel. Okay. Scott, man, thank you so much for, for showing us around here and finishing. Uh, I have a question for you. How long have you been here uh, with, with Gibson in the custom shop? I've actually been with the company for 32 years. Whoa! Yeah. In this department? Only in finishing. I've never been outside of finishing all 32 man. years. Yeah. So you see quite a few guitars uh, come through here, huh? I've, I've, seen a, I've seen a couple in my day, yeah. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Now, were you uh, always in uh, finishing or any prior experience that you were in guitar working or painting or anything like that? Uh, in high school, I painted uh, newspaper racks for this guy that owned the company. Yeah. When I graduated high school, literally one month later, I'm working for Gibson in the finishing department. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's awesome. And not related to anyone in Rush. No, my brother's <laughs> tried to convince me I was, but it turned out it wasn't true, man. So, yeah. Well, Dave, thank you so much for taking the time, man. And uh, appreciate you being here, man. Appreciate yeah. it. My pleasure. Thank my you. Pleasure.